All right, welcome everybody to another stream. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, uh, you know, for those who have not been watching my streams before, I do a lot of uh, Rust and kind of uh, computing basic stuff, and today is not going to be any different. We're going to be uh, picking up where we left off from last week's stream. Um, we're learning a bit about Rust uh, FFI, Foreign Function Interface, and that's how you interact with other languages uh, in Rust, mainly through um, a C ABI. Um, and uh, we're going to basically be picking up where we were last week. I'll go through uh, quickly what we did last week, but if you haven't um, done so, then I would suggest uh, catching my stream from last week. It's up on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, we're gonna make see how much progress we make in about an hour and a half or so, um, maybe upwards of two hours, and um, and hopefully we can kind of learn more about how FFI and and C interoperability in Rust uh, works. Um, and of course, if uh, if you're new, absolutely new to Rust today, uh, then today's stream is a little bit more advanced. It's definitely not meant for beginners to the language, um, but. You know, if you're watching this live, then don't hesitate to, to ask uh, any questions that you might have. Happy to answer them. Um, this is all about learning. We're not here to kind of build, uh, you know, the best code base ever. It's really uh, mostly about um, learning and, and, you know, seeing how much we can, can get done and, and learn together. So I'm going to switch on over here to uh, my screen. And hopefully you see here... Uh, up on my screen, my, my GitHub here, and I created since last week uh, a, a GitHub uh, repository here with the code that we did last week, called it uh, MSFS2020, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, um, which is always a mouthful to say. Um, and so I thought we would, uh, you know, start by going through the code. Um, basically what we've been doing is, is translating this um, example that we have here from our from the documentation on the sim connect um, API which is what we're we're actually connecting with in order to talk with uh, the Microsoft flight simulator um, game uh, which you can see is running in the background here um, and we didn't quite finish this so I think we're going to start by by finishing this example up um, but we're almost there um, and then we can move on to to other examples there there are plenty of other examples here and in particular I thought one that could be interesting for us to, to look into is this weather station um, example which gets weather uh, updates um, as you're flying in the game um, all right um, and of course, we, we have here the uh, the actual documentation for, for SimConnect that we, we can refer to. But that, let's take a look at the code and go over and see what we did um, last week real quickly. All right. Um, so probably actually the first thing to, to look at is our build.rs file here. Um, let me go ahead and close this. This build.rs file is our build file that gets run every time. Uh, it doesn't get run every time, but it gets run when we're building our, our project and kind of offers us a way to hook in to the compilation process. Um, and what we're doing here is using bind gen in order to generate bindings to the SimConnect API, which is a, is a C, or rather actually a C++ um, uh, API. Um, it's a DLL that's installed on my Windows machine here. Um, and there's a header file um, that uh, that the library exposes, and what BindGen does is it reads in that uh, header file and basically produces a whole bunch uh, of code. So we went through a couple of things of getting that to work um, and getting the linker to be happy um, that you can you can see in last week's stream, um, and we had to you know add some flags here and stuff like that, and we're we're using this whitelist function functionality, which um, adds uh, these these types to an allow list so that we're not generating all of the code at once. Um, this is in particularly important because if you look at the uh, wrapper.h file, which is is basically wrapping um, this include to the sim connect. Um, header file here, we're also including windows.h, which is a huge header file that ships on windows. Um, and if it's, you know, it's quite possible for BindGen to actually um, produce code for, for windows.h, but it takes quite a while because windows.h is so big. 
Um, and so this, this allow list functionality that we have inside of our build folder um, allows us to kind of hone in and say, we only want these types that we, that we need, these functions, these types and stuff like that. All right, so let's look at the actual code. Of course, uh, we're, we're generating this code and then we're kind of splatting it into our project here with this ugly incantation right here, which basically says, hey, all of that code that you generated, um, that you put in my out directories uh, slash bindings.rs, take that code and just like paste it into this to this file here. <clears throat> so, you know, this is how it's done. It's not, uh, you know, you could argue it's maybe not the, the absolute most elegant thing in the world, but it definitely gets the job done. I um, mean, this is definitely the way that uh, the recommended way to, to do things. So then inside of our main.rs file, um, what are we actually doing here? Well, let's start here in main. Um, we, we went ahead and created a sim connect struct, which kind of is our, our wrapper struct that provides um, a safe API on top of uh, the, the unsafe C API. Um, it's not fully safe yet because we're, we're not done, obviously. Um, but the hope is that um, we're, we will be able to um, fully encapsulate everything in a, in a safe API. And so what are we doing right now? Well, we're creating this SimConnect API by calling this new function here. And this does um, the, the dance of calling this uh, SimConnect underscore open function here, which kind of establishes a connection to the SimConnect server, which is running inside of, uh, of Microsoft Flight Simulator and allows us to hook into the game. Um, and uh, most of the things that we're passing to it are, are zero or null because we don't care about them. Um, and then we're saving that as a handle inside of this uh, SimConnect struct here. So it gives us a, a way of, of uh, accessing that later on because basically every SimConnect function that we use takes this handle as its first argument. Um, and then, you know, when, when uh, this SimConnect uh, struct gets dropped, it calls this simconnect close uh, function here, and that you know cleanly closes the connection to to simconnect. Um, and this is a very common pattern. Uh, oftentimes in in C APIs, um, you have you know a like an, a, a, a create function and then a destroy function, or in this case an open and a close function. And it's very common in Rust to map those to you know the new function and um, and the drop function, um, so that these, so that the uh, close or the destroy function gets called automatically on drop. Um, all right, so up here in main, the next thing that we're doing is calling this associate breaks uh, method, um, and what that does is associate a uh, an event that the game emits, the breaks event, with a user defined event, an event that we have defined. Um, this this breaks event here, um, and we call this sim connect map client event to sim uh, event, which allows us to map between this breaks uh, event that that Microsoft Flight Simulator actually understands, um, and this breaks event. Um, it's a bit of a strange API, like uh, you know why can't we just get back an enum saying what event happened or something like that? I think um, looking through the docs and stuff like that. It seems to be because you can define your own kind of custom events and stuff like that. So this is a little bit more flexible of a way of doing things. By the way, I'm no expert on SimConnect, so I might be saying wrong things. If you've done any SimConnect programming in the past, let me know. Um, I'd love to learn more about it. I'm just going off of what I've seen in examples and stuff like that. So we're, we're all learning this uh, together today. Um, cool, so we're, we're mapping this uh, of this breaks event to our event that we are have created. This is just, a, of course, an enum down here um, breaks. Um, so nothing special there. Um, then we do something around adding it to a notification group, which is supposedly a way of grouping um, notifications together or events together inside of groups. And then you can provide a, a priority to that notification group um, so that if you want to know, if you want to ensure that you're getting certain events um, at the expense of others, um, presumably in case of like you're, you're getting spammed with events that will prioritize certain events over others, um, you can use that functionality here. But this is all hard, hard coded. Of course, like we have this associated breaks method that's kind of weird. We don't want to have to like um, hard code, like associate whatever event. There's a lot of events and stuff like that. So presumably we want to give the, the user some flexibility. 
And then the last thing that we're doing in the main function is we're looping uh, continuously. This is just a, a never ending loop here. Um, and uh, you know we're sleeping for one second on every iteration of the loop. And then we're calling this simConnect call dispatch uh, function, which associates a callback function to the handle. Um, and, and so every time you get a notification, this callback will be called, or so I thought. There, there's a little point on that um, that I would, I'd like to talk about after we're done here. And so down here, this is our callback function that you can see here. It's, it's kind of nasty in that it's, you know, it's taking raw pointers and stuff like that that we have to dereference. Um, and then we have to see if, if the ID of, the, of this uh, data that we're getting here matches up, and then we know that certain things um, occur. And this is, there's also a long list of things that can happen here. Um, one thing that we've seen happen is that every time we call open, um, this simconnect rev rec v id some connect rec v id open thing happens and we know that the connection has been successfully opened so we get a callback for that um and the other thing that we get is this uh rec v id event which happens when events happen in the game um and so uh, you know things happen in the game or you you have uh, said you want to get um, notified of events, you'll get them through here. Um, and there's a ton of other things that we've just printed out when we don't recognize a, a certain um, event in this callback. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. There's a couple of points that uh, I've I've learned about since you know since today, right before the stream. I looked through a couple more examples um, and and stuff like that, and read a little bit more about the API. Um, and so I'd like to talk about those, but um, this is this is basically where we are. We're just going to continue um, doing this example that we saw here, which is almost what uh, we've done so far. There's a couple of things that we've not done in, that are that are in this example, um, and that's really just getting this uh, this data um, that's associated with the uh, event breaks um, uh, event here. Um, and of course, we can also do this where we, you know, we quit and stuff like that. But uh, we'll see if we get there. Um, and I think that's it. There's another example that's very similar to this that maps uh, input. So when you actually like, you can customize input. Like if I hit something on my um, on my keyboard or on my uh, joystick that I have down here, um, then something else will happen. We could look into those as well. Um, all right. So we have a question in chat here. Uh, the Red Firefox is asking. Are all these functions pure blocking calls? Um, yes, as far as I understand, everything here is blocking. Um, so, um, of course, this, um, where is it? This callback here is not blocking our thread. So presumably this, this callback is running on a different thread than, than our code is, right? Because we are just registering this callback with SimConnect and we, we are never calling this callback. SimConnect is calling it on our behalf. So this is running somewhere else, but everything else in here is blocking. Every other API call, as far as I understand, is, is, is blocking. Um, now here, this kind of perfectly leads into the thing that I learned that is different than I thought it was last, uh, last time. I was always confused, like this example uh, here that we're, that we're uh, imitating, um, where is it? Uh, yeah, here. So this is where they're doing the, the, the while loop. They're looping forever and they're calling sim, sim connect call dispatch um, over and over again. And I thought, that's that's funny. Like, why are they looping and calling this thing over again? Uh, what are we, I th my, in my head, the mental model that I had was that we're associating this callback function to this sim connect handle here and then SimConnect will hold on to that handle and that dispatch dispatch function, and you know for every thing that happens where there's you know an appropriate event for it, it will call this dispatch function. That's not how it works. Um, if we go and look at the documentation for this, um, the SimConnect call dispatch function is used to process the next SimConnect message received through the specified callback function. So as it turns out. This callback function, when we call some sim connect call dispatch, our callback uh, function that we register will be called once with the next event inside of this buffer 
um, that SimConnect is keeping of, of events that have happened. So that's why they're looping over and over again, basically saying like, keep on giving me stuff. Um, and I don't know how big this buffer is um, of events that SimConnect is holding onto. I don't know what happens when SimConnect runs out of, of events. Presumably if things happen very quickly, the buffer could, could overflow and, and events could be lost. I have no idea. So like these are things that we're gonna have to figure out um, as we go along. Um, but that's something that where this, this API is just very awkward in a way. And um, there's many different ways that we can we can model this in, in a more Rust-like or a more idiomatic fashion. And that's kind of the fun of this whole exercise is really figuring out like, okay, this API does what it does, but that doesn't mean we have to use it that way. We can provide a nicer API or more idiomatic API or even just a different API if it if it offends our sensibilities and we want something different, we can provide that to users where they don't have to um, necessarily use SimConnect in in this way. So we're not only providing a safe API, we, we can also provide a more idiomatic API on top of uh, on top of this. All right. Uh, looks like there's no other questions, but keep them coming if you have them. And I think we will go ahead and um, get started. So, you know, I was going back and forth in terms of what, you know, what I wanted to do here. Should we, um, should we just keep going and getting new functionality, um, trying to add more functionality to this, even if that functionality is, is unsafe or unidiomatic or not very, you know, pretty to use or nice to use, or should we, uh, focus on this functionality here and try and provide safer and nicer APIs. Um, I would be interested, chat, for you to, to um, let me know what you would like to see. Would you like to um, see more functionality implemented or rather less functionality, but like let's work on making the APIs nicer or safer or more idiomatic? Which one would you uh, rather see? Let me know um, and we can decide uh, which way we want to go with things um i think while while chat is uh is letting me know what they want to see we can go ahead and just finish this uh here um where and our callback um where every time we get some event of some sort we're just printing event out to the to uh standard out um and so uh you know what we actually want to do is here um, we want to take a look at that event and see is the event our event breaks um, event. And if it is, then print something out specifically saying, hey, we got a break event happening here. Um, so let's do that real quick. All right. Oops. So we're printing out event here. What we're doing and what's happening in the C++ code is when we get the simconnect rev rec v id event, which is this right here, um, of course, namespace differently um, in, in the Rust code, so it's even longer. Um, we then cast the pointer that we're getting into our callback as a different type. Um, so you can see here, we're being passed into our callback as simconnect rec v. Um, and uh, we want to, when it, when it is an event, we can say, okay, let's actually cast our event, uh, uh, this, this data uh, pointer as a simconnect rec v underscore event. Um, and if we look at, uh, can I, no, I cannot. Let's just copy this. I wanna open up. Want to open? Uh, can I code? And I'm going to open up the um, the header file so that we can look at that. So this is the actual header file um, that that uh, SimConnect comes with, and we are going to be looking for uh, back here. Um, we're going to be looking for this right here. SimConnect rec the underscore event. Let's see what that looks like. And you can see here, this is actually C++ code here because we're inheriting from simconnect rec v. So essentially simconnect rec v event is just the simconnect rec v 
with a few more fields in it. Um, and that's actually, I've, I've looked at the code. Um, hello, toggle bit, how's it going? Um, I've looked at the code and basically how it, and Rust how it is, is we have a sim connect rec v struct and then the sim connect rec v event struct is its first field is just sim connect rec v. So all the fields from sim connect rec v are kind of the first fields of sim connect rec v underscore event. Um, cool. So let's do this uh, uh, pointer casting here. So what we want to do is say uh, let event equals, and then we're going to take data here and say data as const, and then we want to use bindings um, sim connect rec v underscore event. And um, it's saying it doesn't know uh, what this is, uh, which is because in our build.rs uh, file here, we are not using this uh, allow list functionality here. Um, or we actually want this down here. Whitelist type rec v underscore event. Oh, hello, Dunkel Zeiter, how you doing? All right, looks like we got some more people showing up in the chat. It's pretty cool. All right, so now it's compiling so we can, we're successfully casting our data pointer to this simconnect rec v event uh, struct here. And of course we wanna, we don't want a pointer to it. We just want that actual struct itself. So we can go ahead and dereference it like this. And so now on the stack, we have this sim connect rec v event thing. Um, and we can see here what um, we need to look for. We need to look for the u event ID um, field here and uh, see what it is. So we can say match event and uh, um, we want match event dot u event ID. And when that is equal to, well, this is tough. Um, okay, so what we actually get here is a number that is, should be equal to whatever event underscore breaks is here, which is presumably zero. Um, in C, you know, enums are, are basically always just numbers. Um, in Rust, it's not quite that way because Rust has different types of enums. So we have down here this event, um, this event uh, enum that we've we've uh, implemented down here. We've said that it's represented in memory as an un unsigned 32-bit integer here. Um, but if we go and try and say, well, if this is equal to event breaks uh, and print line breaks, um, this won't work because they're different types, right? U32 and event, the event enum are different types. Um, and so, it would be really nice if we had a way to um, get an event enum from this type, um, and that, you know we can we can simply uh, implement some kind of function, presumably from try from or something like that, that takes in a number and like tries to convert from that number um, to uh, to our event enum here, but that's. It's a lot of code that we can type uh, and stuff like that. So we can go on crates.io. Um, let's just look in here. Crates.io and uh, primitive. There's a whole bunch of um, there's a whole bunch of them here, like enum primitive, for instance. Um, but that's four years old. Um, trying to think. This this is one that I've used before. Num enum here. 
So a num enum is a procedural macro to make interoperation between primitives and enums easier, which is exactly what we need. Um, so you can see here they have an enum um, and they derive into primitive for an easy way to, to go from the enum into the primitive. And they also have a try from primitive, which is a good way to, from going from a primitive like a U8 here into, uh, into the number. Um, and I think uh, this is a really great uh, library that will save us a couple of, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of typing. Um, so we can just, let's go ahead and use this. So we're bringing in num enum here. Um, and we can uh, derive num enum into primitive. And so then we should be able to say here event try from, and this will try to go from that U32 number that we get uh, into an enum. And here we can just say if it didn't work, like unrecognized event. All right, what do we, oh, this needs to be that. This is complaining because we don't have the try from trait, which you need to have in scope. So that's standard convert, I believe it's standard convert, try from. And this brings that try from uh, trait into scope. And that's exactly what our event uh, implements here. Um, why is it not, oh, not into primitive, try from primitive. Hopefully that should work. What is going on here? Expected comma. I got some weird syntax highlighting going on here. It's Rust analyzers seem to kind of, yeah, I think Rust analyzer kind of lost it there for a second. This looks to be fine. Cool. Uh, so we are trying to go from this U event ID to an event enum, and if that succeeds, then we'll print out breaks here. Oh, wow. So the reason that a bunch of people came into chat is because I got raided. Yay. I like when I, I think that was maybe the first time I got raided. So th thank you very much, Togobit, for coming in and, uh, and raiding me. I appreciate that. Um, all right, cool. So we are going from a U32 to an event. This uh, seems to compile let us try to actually run this and see if it works. Um, let's clear this and we can run cargo run. We're getting a whole bunch of uh, warnings here. Um, that's fine, but it's running and we've gotten open here because we've received this open uh, call here. Um, and I should have done this before. Um, I'm going to go in here. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator that you're seeing right here. Um, and where should we take off from? Um, let's see. Somewhere, somewhere with light would be good. Um, let's do here. Set as departure. So we're going to fly from there. Um, hopefully this uh, loads quickly here. And what we're going to do is I'm just simply going to hit the brakes button on my, let's bring this up, bring this puppy up over here. <laughs> All right. So here's my uh, flight gear here. You can see here my, uh, my joystick here. Um, and if I'm remembering correctly, since it's been a day or two since I've last uh, flown in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the four button, which is right here on the top of uh, the joystick, is the brakes button. And so hopefully when, I, when this loads and we're actually sitting in the plane, 
when I hit the four button, we will see uh, breaks uh, printed to the screen. Um, but of course, you have to wait a very long time in Microsoft Flight Simulator for it to load because it's loading like the entire world, basically. Um, this game is massive, by the way. I had an update today, uh, which I'm glad that I actually ran Flight Simulator before getting on the stream. Um, I ran the game and there was an update, small update, and it was two gigs. You know, that's, a, that's what a small update looks like. All right, so you can't see, probably can't see the whole screen. That's fine though. Um, we're sitting in a plane here and I'm gonna and hit the, the brakes button right now and we'll see if it goes. So let's hit the brakes button. Hey, brakes, cool. And if we hit it again, and it seems to be working. I'm hitting it over and over again. And we're getting it with some delay because we're, we're actually sleeping for a second in between each event. Um, but it seems to be working, which is really cool. So, so that's good. Um, that means that we have uh, a connection here to uh, SimConnect. We're connecting into the game. We're getting events from it, events that uh, we have associated with this other event. Um, but this is just this is just nasty, nasty code. Um, you know, we we are not C programmers. We're Rust programmers, and we don't uh, you know we don't tend to enjoy dealing with raw pointers and having to use unsafe and all of this stuff is unsafe. Wouldn't it be great if instead we could go ahead uh, and just write this code in a much uh, in a much safer way? And so, you know, today we'll be writing a bunch of unsafe, but later on when we want to use SimConnect for a bunch of, you know, for our fun project, uh, we don't have to use uh, unsafe, hopefully. So this is where the fun of the whole thing really you know, gets going where we have the ability to choose what this API actually looks like. Um, and so let's start thinking about this. How do we, how, do, how can we recreate some of this functionality such that um, we don't have to um, write a whole bunch of stuff inside of an unsafe X turn C callback with pointers and stuff like that. We can provide a safe API for people. Um, well, the first thing that we need to do is, is talk about this associate breaks uh, method here. This is not so good, right? Um, associate breaks, is, it's hard coded for the breaks events. Um, you know, we don't want people to have to either write all of this code themselves. Um, preferably, uh, users of this library won't have access to the raw C bindings at all. Or, you know, maybe we have a feature or something like that, or like a, you know, a, a, a bindings module would, can be exposed. But that's kind of like only in worst case scenarios will you use the bind the raw C bindings. Um, we want to provide a nice Rust uh, API for people. And so associate breaks is not really going to cut it. What we really want to expose to people probably is like an associate event. And the problem that I'm having right now is that I've never used SimConnect before, so I don't really know what the best way to um, to expose this API is. Um, this is a difference from if you're actually doing some of this stuff in real life. Um, you you probably want to become familiar with the C API before you write safe bindings on top of it. We're not going to be doing that. I'm not fully familiar with uh, with SimConnect C API, um, but that's fine. We're going to use this as a learning opportunity. And, and if we mess up, it's cool because we can rewrite the code and, and see um, different kind of strategies for exposing uh, APIs. So ultimately, probably what we're going to come up with is not as fully flexible as the C API is in first estimation. Um, but that's fine. We can, um, as we need that flexibility, we can add functionality to our Rust, uh, our Rust API and see how kind of it, it comes out at the end. Um, so what I think we should do um, is have something maybe like um, register, register event. Uh, thank you very much for the follows, everyone. I really appreciate that. Um, here in register event, what we can do instead is go ahead and take in um, an event of some sort. 
Um, and he, this is where things will be a bit different um, than, than the C API is. Um, what in the C API, there's kind of uh, these strings that you pass in that are well-known strings to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, and you associate them with your user-defined event down here. So we called it breaks, but this could have been foo. Um, and, and it would still get triggered um, on, on the breaks uh, event. Um, this, can, this is probably quite flexible so that you can have multiple events triggered on, on the same uh, some event and stuff like that. Um, but I think it might be easier for kind of simple things if we had breaks here know about this well-known string um, such that when you pass in the event, um, you can, uh, it, it will know to translate itself as this breaks uh, string here. And then maybe um, event, if, you know, if a user creates an event, um, we can um, instead have something like custom or something like that. Um, where something like this, um, where the user can still define custom events um, inside of this event enum, but for events with actual names, then they will be defined to um, to well known uh, you know sim events like breaks here. Um, so let's let's try this as our uh, as our API, and we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, of course, now that we have a custom thing here with a C string and stuff like that, um, we don't want it to be copy anymore um, and we just used num to, to to do this but um, we don't want that either uh, anymore um, and so um, let's go mm. oh this is tough this is real tough you know what for now let's get rid of this let's go back to the way that we were we'll get rid of this custom we'll figure out how to do custom events um, at a at a later point for now, um, let's just do this where we say impl breaks, oh, sorry, impl event. And we're going to do an as c string um, here. This will um, translate our event into this well known c string, like breaks here, um, that we have. So we can do, and let's just, we're just going to return a um, a pointer here. Um, now users of, of this uh, library won't usually use as csr here, um, so it's, you know, it's fine. And this is a safe function. There's nothing, you know, you can't mess up too bad as long as you don't use the pointer. Um, so, and this is going to take self here. We're going to match on self. Um, and there's only one thing for now. If it's breaks, then do breaks. And it has to be a C string with a trailing uh, null at the end. And as pointer. And we don't want this to be mute here because we're not actually going to be writing to it. We want it to be const. And so this should work. And then up here, um, instead of hard coding, all this stuff here, um, we can just say that the event is still going to be as a U32 here, and the name is uh, event dot as cster. Um, and I think this is still complaining because it's yeah, it's expecting a pointer to an i8 instead of a u8. That's that's fine. Uh, we can just cast as. Okay, so now we're registering this event. We're gonna we're still hard coding the group, the notification group that it's a, a part of. We can think um, a little bit further on. Do we want to be, uh, you know, what are groups used for actually? How do we want to support them? Um, and of course, notification group priorities as well. Um, we're hard coding that as well as priority one, which I believe is the highest priority. Um, so now we're not hard coding. Um, the the breaks event anymore we actually can pass it in 
uh, up here. So this associate breaks no longer works that way. We can say register event, and our event is going to be event breaks. Just like that. Cool. We, you know, we still only have one event so far, but this at least freezes up in the future to add more events um, that we want to support, and we don't have to, you know, create new methods or anything. Um, it all just works through register event here. Um, there's Red Firefox. Why not use i8 and the function directly? Um, that's a that's a good question. Um, we we certainly can um and in fact i think if we look at uh, where is it here um not some connect open this one here um if we go look at our bindings and i don't know why yeah i think um there is a there's a thing we can change for rust analyzer to actually understand uh this this is coming you know from generated code and so by default rust analyzer doesn't understand it we can't look at it um i don't want to take the time to set that up right now and fiddle around with that but there is a way to do it um where are we we're gonna try and find here the generated code um here it is yeah and you can see the event name that we're actually taking in is actually a pointer to std os raw char, um, which on Windows, I think, is an i8, this char. On other platforms, it's something different. Um, we can leave it as an i8 in, in, because we're only ever going to run this on Windows. Microsoft Flight Simulator only works on Windows, um, or I guess on Xbox, but Xbox is also Windows. Um, so... Or we can just go ahead and, and change this over to uh, raw C char instead. Um, so these are kind of the finicky um, choices that we have to make. So we can do C char and here as const C char. And then up here, we no longer have to, uh, sorry, right up here, we no longer have to cast here because it's already a C char. So this works. This is fine as well. Yeah, so chat is also saying as X is usually on methods that take ampersand X, uh, but take ampersand self, sorry. Um, whereas this is taking um, this is taking ownership over self. That's definitely a good point. Is I'm wondering if what the um, if th that still pertains to um, to copy types. That's why we're taking self here is because it's copy, and you know why not take uh, why not take ownership over self um, here. We certainly could do this as well. That also works. Um, but yeah, taking a reference to a copy type is, is not really, is also something that you don't normally do. So yeah, we could we could change this to into as C char, uh, C, uh, C string, but I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what, the, um, what the recommendation is on that. All right, cool. So, you know, we're a little bit more flexible now. Um, we have register event here. That's great. Um, this is still nasty where we have to constantly loop and call sim, sim connect call dispatch here. Um, and, you know, I was thinking a little bit before the, before the stream of how we would do this. Um, you know, how we could expose this in a safe way. It's a bit unfortunate that we have to constantly call simconnect underscore call dispatch in order for it because it processes only um, one event at a time. Um, and that's a little bit strange. And in fact, I believe like I was, I was looking through the, um, through the documentation and 
I found, let's see if it's linked here. Let's go to API reference. Oh yeah, there it was. Yeah, there's also, there, there's simconnect underscore call dispatch here, which is used to process the next simconnect message through a callback. Um, and there's simconnect get ne next dispatch, um, which is used to process the next message received. Um, <coughs> I think this is just a hack around the fact that C doesn't have um, doesn't have lambdas, doesn't have uh, closures in it. Um, in Rust, we do have closures, so presumably we could go ahead um, and use just get next dispatch. Um, we could we could offer several things. We could say like get next item, um, something like this. Uh, let's go down here where we say get next notification and this would return a struct that represents um, which represents this up here the sim connect rec v we could do that um, that's a possibility, and and you know it would be up to the the user to just constantly call uh, over and over again, um, or you know we could potentially also have like um, process notifications like this, um, and this would block the current thread and simply loop over and call um, the and call get next. Uh, notification and process that with a closure that we that we provide so um, handler here would be you know some closure that we pass in and would handle each event uh, each notification in turn um, we could provide both there's another uh, thing that we could possibly do um, which would be a bit more difficult um, is potentially have the handler on another thread um, where we, we send off these notifications to another thread. The only issue with that is I, ha I have no idea if this library is thread safe at all. And my feeling is it's not thread safe. So like using another thread to like, so we don't have to block the current thread when we're handling notifications seems like it's possibly error prone because this library is potentially completely uh, sorry, unsafe. And you know we'll end up with a whole bunch of issues if we try and uh, you know use these handlers on another thread. Um, there's a question in chat of what does the closure have to do with the dispatch call? I was simply saying the dispatch call here. So we're, we use dispatch call in order to call this callback here. Um, and like we do that in a way because C doesn't like this, this is a hard coded callback here. C doesn't have closures. So, um, we have to provide like a, a hard coded, um, uh, function here. Um, in Rust, since we have closures, we have a little bit more flexibility of how we're handling this API. That's all I wanted to say there. So we are, uh, we're in a good position in Rust because we have more flexibility of how we actually want to handle this. So I'm, I'm curious um, for those uh, in chat, what do you think we should do? Should we go ahead and do a get next notification here where every time we get a notification, um, we just, we simply Maybe we loop or something like that, um, block the current thread until we have a new notification, um, or we return option um, with a notification, or should we do just a blocking process notifications um, where it blocks the thread forever? That doesn't sound very nice though. Um, we could also have a process notifications that takes a handler and a cancel token or something like that, um, uh, or we could do both. Um, let's start with get next notification and see how kind of it turns out. Um, and then we can see if we want to do the process notifications blocking one um, as, as well. Cool. Um, so we're going to do get, get next notification here and it's going to return an option of a notification. And notification has not been implemented yet so this won't work so we can do down here struct notification and what the notification will be is essentially an encapsulation of um of what 
this is here. And I think struct is not the right way to go. So it's going to be an encapsulation of our of our sim connect rec v here. Um, struct is probably not the way to go. Uh, it's probably going to be an enum here um, that has various uh, possibilities on it. Um, an enum with associated data. Um, uh, yeah, the Red Firefox is saying sounds similar to futures. Yeah, you, uh, you could also imagine somehow creating something that works with futures where you, you or a stream even, where you can say, give me a stream of events um, as they happen. Um, that's kind of, it's also hard to do when you can't use threads or you can't put it on a, on a background. Uh, you can't put this processing on the background like you're kind of stuck on the thread that you're on. Um, so maybe it wouldn't quite work out. All right, so this notification, what are, what are some things that it can be? Well, essentially, whatever this DWID thing is here is what this notification at a top level can be. It can be an open notification, it can be an event notification, and there are several others. Um, SuperCuber is asking, why can't you use threads? I don't know. If anybody can tell me if SimConnect is thread safe and we can actually um, we can actually call like uh, get, next, next, get next dispatch or call dispatch or something on another thread um, and that's fine, then we can use threads. Um, I have yet to see any example that uses threads though. And so my inclination is that um, threads are, are off the table and I, for today, at least, um, when we don't know, I would really hate to like go down the thread route and then just end up with weird bugs, and and that's all we do. Um, so if anybody knows, um, and Red Firefox is saying it's not thread safe, uh, do you know that for a fact, Red Firefox? I would I would be curious to know if if you if you know that or if you're just going off of what I'm saying that it's not thread safe. Uh, that would be interesting to know. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, we wanted to see what kind of notifications we can get. Um, so let's see. We, oops, want to see, find this enum in the docs. I think. Yeah. Um, where is this? Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah, we want this WID here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so these are all the, the different notifications that we can get. There's a lot of them here. Um, I think the ones that are of particular importance to us are open, which we've already had, event, which we've already had, and null is another one um, because null is simply the event does not, uh, there is no event. It's a null event. Um, so um, we want to down here um, say it can be open um, and it can be an event and this will return back an event. Um, and of course, we're, hand we're gonna handle the null event case by returning none from this option here. Great, so now we can actually um, go ahead and implement this. Um, the first thing that we're gonna call is, and we might actually need, goodness, next dispatch, yeah. We're probably gonna have to actually return a result here. Um, thank you very much, uh, Shushak55 for the, the follow, I appreciate it. Um, we're gonna probably have to return a result here um, because these all these calls into um, into the the various SimConnect functions um, can return um, errors. Um, presumably, like if we close Microsoft Flight Simulator while our app is running, it, it will error out and stuff like that. Um, Sim connect clients, so Teleball is saying in chat, Sim connect clients are not currently thread safe. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so that's what I thought. It seems like SimConnect is not thread safe, so the the answer is we can't use threads, which means everything has to be on the same, has to be on the main thread here, um, which is a bit of a bummer. It means that we can't really, there's, it prevents us from doing um, a couple of things. Um, now, not being thread safe uh, is interesting. Um, there's many different variants of not being thread safe. Uh, if we had more information, like it's not thread safe and that you need to have exclusive access when you're calling um, a function using a certain handle. Um, and as long as calling uh, functions with that handle, there's no other function currently being called with that handle, then it's fine. That is different than the handle has state local to that to the main thread where it was created and you can't move it across threads and another way to think of this in rust terms is um is uh is it not thread safe because it's not send or is it thread safe because it's not sync um or both um and that we don't know and that may be somewhere in the docs that there's more information about that but my guess is it's just not thread safe don't use threads is the is the answer cool um, so we need to, uh, go ahead. Let's see here. We need to go ahead and add to our allow list, uh, not in there, sorry. Inside of our build, we need to add this function, um, where we whitelist the function. Let's close this real quick. Um, sim connect get, and it was like get next, get next dispatch. So now we'll have access to some connected next dispatch in our bindings. So we can say unsafe. Um, and we had this success macro that we used before, which simply checks the result from calling these um, some connect functions um, and returns an error if, uh, if they're not, um, if they're zero, um, or not zero, sorry, if they're not successful. So sim connect get next dispatch. Um, and I believe we have to pass in self dot uh, handle um, as pointer. Let's expand this out just a tiny bit more. What is it saying here? Let expressions in this. Okay. Not exactly sure what's going on there. What is it complaining about? Okay, and we need here, um, let's just put to do, because it's complaining that we're not doing what we need to be doing. Uh, I think our macro is a tiny bit buggy. Yeah, I think if we go ahead and do this, we should be good. Yeah, so we, we, we had some problems because our macro was not in its own, defined in its own scope. So we're simply defining a new scope separate from everything else so that our macro doesn't get us in trouble. Um, cool, and now it's giving us the right thing where it's saying get the next dispatch takes three arguments and you're only giving me one. So let's see what the arguments it takes. So this is where it's uh, taking data and it takes uh, a pointer, so a mutable pointer to a pointer to this sim connect rec v and a pointer to dword, which is essentially similar to what we're taking up here, um, just with an extra pointer so this is what the callback is called to. We're just getting uh, mutable uh, handles to that so that we can read from it. Um, so let data. Um, and we want a, um, Getting some empty, some null pointers here that we can write to. And 
And then hopefully we should just be able to pass in data and CB data like that. Cool, looks like this is working. Great, so now after this call to, to unsafe here, uh, to the sim connect get next dispatch here, then we have, in, um, we should probably assert that data is not null and same with CB data. Um, that would that would mean that the docs, I think for, um, I'm pretty sure these will never be null if, uh, if we've return, you know, if it was successful, the call to get net, uh, get nets dispatch. Um, so now um, we can go ahead and read that data um, and say, uh, we're going to read, we're going to dereference data and we should be able to dereference data again, whoops. And DWID. Okay, why is it complaining here? Because this is unsafe, that's why. So we gotta wrap this on unsafe because dereferencing a pointer is unsafe, which is true. And what's it complaining about now? Non-exhaustive, great. So much like we've done up here, in our callback function from before, um, we can simply steal these two. So we're gonna look at this DWID and see what kind of um, what kind of sim connect rec v we're getting back. Um, and of course, if it's nothing, it's something else that we don't recognize, we can do it here. In fact, we can just return none there. So here is going to be some notification, actually for now, because uh, this is a little more involved, we'll just go ahead and do this. We'll, we'll fix that in a second. And here, this notification is going to be open. All right, what is it? Mm, apparently, this is a bit strange. Do we have some kind of, looks like we got some kind of, are we missing a, that looks better. Interesting. So we're getting an error here where it's saying, ah, yes. So the first thing it's saying is we are returning an option here, but we need to return a result of an option. So so that should work there. And then here it's saying that these are U32s. Sorry, it's expecting a U32, but it found an I32. That's very strange that DWID is a U32. Are we casting up here? Oh, we are, sorry. So we need to do this as well. We need to cast this DWID as an I32, as an I32, and that will satisfy that. Cool, so now, now it should be working. Great. So essentially, uh, just to repeat what we've done here, we are we are calling sim connect get nets dispatch. It's giving us um, it's writing to our mutable pointer with the with the data here. We're asserting that that data is not null. We're actually not going to use CB data for now, but you know we have it just in case. And then we're dereferencing that that pointer to get at that underlying struct, and then looking at its DWID field. Casting it as an I32 because it's it comes as a U32, and then seeing if it's this kind this RecV ID open, 
then we know that the notification we have is this open notification. If it's a RecV ID event, then we have an event notification, which we're going to handle in just a second. And otherwise, it's we don't know it. Um, and in fact, what we can do, I think, is bindings sim connect uh, RecV ID null. This is where eventually this is the only one that will return none here is when it's null. Um, and you know what, for now, let's go ahead and panic. We can just say got unrecognized notification. Eventually we will, um, we won't have to panic here. All right. Cool, so now we have to just handle this uh, where we're getting an event here. And essentially what we gotta do is exactly what we did up in the call callback here, um, where we cast the pointer um, to this simconnect rec v underscore event, and then we try and get an event out of it. We try and parse its u event ID as an, as an event that we understand. Um, all right here, and this is now actually this, um, you know what we should do? We should, let's, let's take down this data one, one notch. It's a double pointer. We, we just want one pointer here. That will require us to use unsafe again, which is all right. And of course, we don't need these parentheses now. And then we don't have to do this double pointer um, dereferencing here. All right. Let's see here, what is it complaining about? Ah, of course, this is also unsafe. Now, I personally, you know, you, you see me writing unsafe all over the place, and you might be thinking, why don't you just write unsafe once and everything can be inside of unsafe. I personally um, like to go ahead and write unsafe as kind of granular as possible um, so that I can see very easily, okay, this is unsafe, but all this here is, is not unsafe. Okay, this is unsafe. Just makes it a little bit easier. Um, eventually, we might we might kind of consolidate some of this unsafe because you know there is a point where you get a little bit too granular and you're you're writing unsafe on every single line um but but i i like to start with the case of you know only use unsafe like literally exactly where you need it um and um and don't use unsafe anywhere else cool so, and Red Firefox is asking, are we going to map all notifications? Like, eventually we could. We could write some kind of, uh, you know, we can probably in the future write some macro that makes it a little bit nicer to, to map between, um, you know, numbers and these notifications. But I think eventually, yeah, you would want to um, map all notifications. Or, you know, or you can make some decision and say, for these 20 things that are really commonly used, we'll have custom notifications, and then um, and then you can have a, a, a notification in our enum that's like, um, you know, rarely used to notification, and it provides you just kind of a raw access to that notification. Um, so that if you need it, you know, it's there, but most of the time you, you don't need it. I don't know. Cool. Um, Great, so here, instead of doing these print lines, um, we are simply going to try here. This is, this is interesting. What should we do when we get an event that we don't recognize? Um, makes you think, should this be this? perhaps, where event has an optional event inside of it, um, that's possible. Uh, 
and looks like my phone here is telling me I don't have any more viewers so unless everybody doesn't like me anymore and decided to uh, abandon the stream all at once maybe there's some kind of stream let me uh, chat let me know if you're if you're still with me here and that twitch is just uh, messing around and not showing the right uh, viewer count um, we're gonna keep going of course um, oh looks like chat is is here it's just the viewer count is wrong all right well that's all right cool all right cool we got we still got viewers welcome welcome to the stream glad to have you here um so yeah we're we're, we're basically deciding if you get an if you get an event notification but you can't successfully you you don't recognize the event here um that seems like it's a bug. Like, that should never happen. Um, you should always recognize the event. As far as I understand, um, you should always get an event. Because um, you're, you're explicitly registering for these events. So I'm going to say um, we will just unwrap this. And say, like, if you don't recognize this, like... Go ahead and panic, and we'll see if we run into this issue. Um, unrecognized event. Cool. So this is going to be our event. some event with some notification event it's a bit confusing that we have notifications and events but that seems there seems to be a difference there events we maybe might want to call them some like I don't know because they're not always user defined but they are user uh, they're user kind of like registered so maybe I don't know registered event or something like that might be a better name but that's something that we can decide on later great so it seems like now we can just call get next notification. Um, and we should be good. So let's let us go ahead and instead of using this unsafe here, we'll say notification or, or simply match sc dot get next notification um, and we should, we should unwrap here we should assume that this will work all the time for now um, and here we can say if it's open print line open and if it's notification event then do we have debug on event print line should hopefully be able to print debug our event here no nope doesn't but we can easily derive that down here derive debug um, what's it complaining about here? There, oh, we're missing a semicolon here. Alrighty. So, and then if there's none, um, then we can say got no. Great. So this allows us to um, this allows us to get each notification as it comes in. So that's good. 
Um, I'm going to keep this callback around before because there's a there's a reason that we probably don't want to only have this um, as our as our main API. But let's go ahead and run this real quick and see. Oh, uh oh, status access violation. So we have our first uh, segfold here inside of uh, unsafe code. Now I imagine um, before we before we whip out a um, some kind of debugger to see what's going on. Um, let us see how far we're getting in here. I imagine it's inside of uh, get next notification. So let's just let's do a little bit of print line debugging real quick. Um, we know that there, if we made it here, that those aren't null. Um, and then we can do print line. Data. DWID. And we'll see if this ends up working for us. Uh, what is this complaining about? Ah, it's unsafe. Ah, interesting. So it looks like we're not even making it here. Are we making it up here? All right. So it looks like it's our call to sim connect get next dispatch. I wonder why that would be. Let's take a look at the so we have a handle, that should be fine. And we know that the handle is non-null. Unless something really weird is going on. Um, let's just do a quick check here that we... Yeah, so we have a pointer to, the, to our handle. And we're passing in so pointer to a pointer to a data buffer initially to be treated as a sim connect rec v structure. That's fine. We're going to make a copy of the data buffer. Make sure that the defined buffer is large enough. I just want to make sure we're getting this far. Probably might have to whip out a debugger soon. Yeah. So it is happening here. Hmm. This is tough though. On oh, this is on Windows too and I'm not good with debuggers on Windows. Um bit of a shame here. I wonder
Yeah, that seems fine, the way that they're doing it. It's especially weird because we know that sim connect get des uh, get next dispatch is oh no it's we don't know that it's probably failing. Um, let's print out HR here. Yeah. Yeah. So right before. So definitely um, getting the status access violation. But with this call to get next dispatch. Um, and as you can see. This is exactly what we're doing here, where we want, we have a mutable pointer to a pointer to, I mean, technically this should be, I guess this should be this, but that's fine. Or, no, no, it says, it says mute. So I'm not exactly sure what could be causing this. Um, if we go ahead real quick, just to, just to check what's going on. If we do, uh, let's see, bindings, sim connect open. Um, And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this this manually here. Let's pull this up here. I just want to call open. Um, we can do this. And name is just going to be just want to get this to roll in here. Yeah, and Chad is wondering if I have to pre-allocate for the sim connect uh, rec v, which is certainly not what they're doing here, right? Um, like, I mean, I guess no, they're not, right? So I mean, this is simply just saying uh, like. Um, Well, maybe you are right. Maybe you are right. Let's, let's actually, this is a good, good point here. We might be writing to uninitialized memory and that's what's getting tripped up here. Um, down here. Um, that we need to allocate the whole thing is in this example code that they have here they're they're uh, simply declaring a pointer to simconnect rec v on the stack so sure this middle pointer here is um, you know, was initialized to null. Um, um, 
137. Oh, yeah, 137 now. Now data. Now we don't have to do this anymore. Now we're not getting a, a, a fault anymore, which is good, um, but we are getting a um, an error here. So real quick, just to just to go back to talk about what we did here, we were getting an access violation, and presumably the reason for that is because we were simply declaring a pointer, um, which makes a lot of sense, right? We were declaring a pointer. Um, to a pointer, um, and simconnect get next. This, uh, this makes perfect sense. Simconnect get next dispatch was taking that mutable pointer and writing to it. But what was that pointer pointing uh, to? Um, nothing. Um, it was null. So really, what we need to do is allocate the thing that we want to write to, and then pass a mutable pointer to that thing, which is what we're doing now. So we have our pointer to some connect rec v here um, and we are passing an ampersand mut here in order to write to that so at the end after calling this data will be full will be a an actual pointer then um yeah, and then chat is saying the CB data in that example is stack allocated objects, so the example would seem to indicate that it's filling out the P data. Maybe CB data inner code needs to be initialized instead. Um, I think as we have it here now, this is this is fine, right? This this should work, and in fact, I mean, it does work in the sense that um, we're getting we're not crashing anymore. Um, well, we're not uh, getting a seg fault anymore, but we are getting um, an H result that is not a success. Um, and so, um, um, oh, don't make me. system error. Okay, now we're getting a, a, some kind of uh, system error here. <clears throat> and this is the fun of, of unsafe programming, right? Um, you know, the code compiles and uh, but it, it certainly does not work in any kind of obvious way why. Um, what is So now we're just looking to see what um, what this H result is. I don't know why it's not giving me. Ah, OK, it's an unspecified failure. Perfect. Uh, so we're getting returned back an unspecified failure. Um, I think in the function, though, yeah, the function failed. But it doesn't say how it failed. Ooh. 
why did it fail? Is important because yeah, because this says, and if the queue, if the queue of of items is empty, it just returns some connect ref c id null. So it's not the fact that um, we are calling it and there's nothing there, and it's returning e fail on when when nothing is there. Um, if nothing is in the event buffer, then we should just get, uh, we should just, just get null back, uh, the null notification, this one. So that's very curious. I don't know. Um, we've, we've reached uh, sort of the end of where I was hoping to stream till. And this is very unfortunate. I hate ending on such a sad cliffhanger. Um, but with such an undescriptive return result where it just says that it's failed and we have no idea why, um, I don't necessarily want to do a whole bunch of Googling and then to try and figure out how to use a debugger on Windows because um, that does not make for interesting television. Um, so unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to call it there for now, and I will look into this and, um, and tweet out what I find when, when I find an answer for it. Um, let me know if, if anybody here does any looking into it as well, and be happy to, to collaborate on this. Um, sorry that it ended up being in such a, such a disappointment, um, how we ended it, but I hope, uh, nevertheless, that y'all learned something today. I know I certainly did. Um, we definitely had a, a bunch of uh, learnings from today. Um, with that being said, I, uh, if you did enjoy it, please uh, make sure to, to follow me on Twitch and on, on Twitter as well. Um, you, you should be able to see uh, my, my information at the top of the screen here. Um, follow me on Twitch and on Twitter. Um, I also have a YouTube channel as well. Um, where I will post this afterwards. Um, and I hope to be back again um, next week, maybe with a resolution to this, and then we can um, go from there. So um, if there are no further questions or anything like that from, from chat, then um, I wish you all a very happy weekend, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you around uh, next time then. All right. Thank you very much.